Welcome to another edition of North Dakota Hockey Central, your TV home for all things UND hockey. I'm Alex Seinert, back for another big show this week that includes conversations with head coach Brad Berry and his newest coaching hire, Carl Gehring, plus a look at UND's upcoming test against Old Highway 2 rivals Bemidji State. First, though, time for the latest episode of North Dakota Hockey's web series, Through These Doors. This week, the crew tagged along with UND's freshmen to give you a taste or a reminder of what it's like to transition from high school to college. What are your kind of future ambitions beyond hockey, if you've got any, if you've thought about it at all? Uh, well, right now I'm in biology, but I'm going to change to forensic sciences, I think. Um, and I don't know if you've ever watched Dex there, but that guy, that's the man. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, doesn't, doesn't he like kill people? <laughs> yeah, okay, not in that sense. <laughs> <laughs> For many incoming freshmen, the transition to college life is often a challenging one. Add on the rigors of being a student athlete, and the bar is set extremely high. It's a lot different than just training every day in the summer. Um, you had a lot of classes to juggle, 15, 16 credits for some people. So um, just juggling those credits and getting your work in at the rink. I know a lot of people go to the rink not once, twice, maybe even three times a day. Um, so getting in, you know, your hockey and your school, um, it's a lot of time management for sure. The art of a slap shot is carefully crafted, but these guys work on mastering household chores and developing personal lives outside the ring. Uh, to develop some of your life skills, like doing your laundry, dishes, and stuff like that. You don't always have your mom there cleaning up for you, but it's, oh, I guess the morning practices are different here too. Like usually like high school, you go to school in the mornings and then just go to practice afterwards, but it's kind of a switch up, but it's kind of nice, I like it. Like, we're, we all have different personalities, so I think, uh, you know, it's, uh, the conversations are, you know, never two of the same. They're, uh, it's, it's just good, you know, there's a lot of, what would you say? Um, uh, yeah, I kind of agree with that. Yeah. There's nothing really else to it. You know? oh, yeah. Judge kind of, you know, he slides his chirps in here and there, you know, he stays quiet, but he uh, lets us know. And it's probably the main target for issue. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. The coaching staff plays an instrumental role in mentoring the group through the transition. They're world-class coaches. Um, all three of them have experience beyond just, you know, coaching college. They all played pro for the most part. and. Um, they're all very experienced, they all know what they're talking about, but not even just their stress on hockey, but as being a good person outside of hockey is pretty remarkable how um, they're all very down to earth and they, you can tell they just care about each and every person, so it's pretty special. The guys, even the coaching staff, they're terrific uh, to work with. I mean, I know in juniors, like the older guys sometimes didn't talk to the younger guys as much. And um, I mean, I know now, like the guys, all the classes, they get along real well. Just lean on each other, they hold you accountable for everything. So it's real good. Obviously the dream I'd say, not just for us too, but for everyone would be to continue hockey yeah. as far as possible. But um, obviously if hockey doesn't work out, and for a lot it won't, um, you gotta have the backup plan. And for me, I'm studying business economics right now, but I'd for sure like to stay in business. Um, wherever that might be. I'm going into accounting as of now, so I like to kind of stick somewhat in sports too. So like if I could find a way to mix the two, that'd be ideal. Well, for me, uh, my backup plan is being a chef. So if hockey doesn't work out, I'm going to go to culinary school.
I guess, I mean, we're all in the same class. I kind of just look at it like that. Um, I mean, I am uh, the alpha male out of all of them. So, um, I don't know, it's kind of good in that way. Um, okay, so talk about going from... <laughs> Good stuff as always. Big thanks to Cassie Niles and the entire Through These Doors team. Next up on North Dakota Hockey Central, Brad Berry comes aboard to look back on UND's first road trip of the year against number two, Minnesota State. Stick around. Welcome back to North Dakota Hockey Central, where we are proud to be joined each week by UND head coach Brad Berry, who comes to us now from inside Ralph Engelstad Arena. Brad, as always, thanks for the time today. Absolutely, Alex. You and the team embarked on your first away series of the season this past weekend, a longer than you'd think drive to Mankato to play Minnesota State. Before we talk about the games themselves, how did you feel the guys handled traveling as a team for the first time? Yeah, I thought it was good. Uh, you know, it was our first road trip, and any time you get to go on the road and spend uh, an extended period of time uh, together, uh, that's always a good thing, team bonding-wise. Uh, you know, we had a good bus trip going down there and had a really good practice on Thursday afternoon, uh, which led into the Friday game. And I thought our guys were ready and uh, charged up for the weekend. Yeah, yeah any time I've traveled with the team, I always enjoy that the guys play cribbage in the back of the bus or on the plane. I'm sure the folks at home are curious, how do you personally pass the time on these long road trips? Do you ever take part in those card games, Brad, are you kind of a cribbage guy? What, what, what do you say to that? Yeah, no, you know what? Uh, uh, our players spend a lot of time with each other, and obviously uh, it culminates with a Thursday night dinner that we usually have uh, after our practice. But after that, you know, the guys are on their own. For us, you know, it's getting ready for the weekend for coaches, and, uh, you know, it's doing video uh, work uh, with, with special teams or five on five structure. And then just trying to uh, trying to get ahead of uh, our, our group as far as trying to build our group through video and and uh, uh, practice uh, structure. Yeah, a lot of preparation. Yeah. Well, let's talk about the hockey now from this past weekend. You took on Minnesota State, the number two team in the country, in a building where they had gone 23 and one over the last two years. But I thought your young squad handled the challenge well. You were the aggressors in game one and opened up a four to two lead before MSU pegged you back to earn the 4-4 tie. What stood out to you about Friday night's contest? Well, I think our, uh, our compete level and our energy and, and, and then obviously our resiliency. You know, we got down one nothing early in the game and our guys held steady and they believed in what we uh, had to do uh, on a shift-by-shift -shift basis. And uh, they chipped away to tie the game and then eventually take the lead. We had a 3-1 lead and a 4-2 lead. And, and I thought our guys did a good job of building that. Now, the other part was, you know, uh, once you have the lead, is trying to retain that and trying to keep pushing forward to, to close the game out. So that was one area that we need to keep working on. But I thought our guys did a really good job on Friday night of, you know, our first game on the road against an experienced team of, of, of dictating play and getting after it. Yeah, certainly. The Mavs would go on to take game two by a 2-1 scoreline, even though you outshot them 35-22 to 22 in that game. You dominated possession with that much reward, and that had to make Saturday feel like a replay of so many games from last season. Yeah, it did in a certain, uh, I guess, aspect of it. But, I, you know, the one thing is, is I think there's a little bit more confidence or a little bit more playmaking within our group this year, uh, which will, uh, you know, hopefully lead to some finished plays going forward here. Uh, you know, one of the things is, is, you know, our, our group here, it's, it's a whole different year, a whole different group. And there's a confidence and a belief in our group that to get the job done. And, you know, we had a couple looks at the end of the game on six on four that we just missed on. And, uh, you know, those are areas that we'll, uh, next time we'll make sure that we'll, uh, we'll finish. Your penalty kill remained perfect on the year with a five for five effort this past weekend. But you lost the series face-off battle for the first time in a long time. You knew you'd be young at center this year. Have you had to adjust your game plan knowing that you wouldn't be as dominant on draws coming into this season? Yeah, you know what, I think it's one of those things too where we had some uh, success in the face-off dot early against Canisius but knew it would be a little bit harder on the road uh, against Mankato. And I think one of the things that we have to do is make sure that you know, we get sharper a little bit, you know, the guys that are in the dot, but also our wingers helping out. And I thought we got better at that as the weekend went on. 
you know, to try to make it. If you're not winning them outright, to try to make it a 50-50 puck battle and, and have the wingers dig in to help out. And I thought we did a better job of that uh, over the course of Saturday. One of the guys who came through in the circle was freshman Shane Pinto. He won a number of big defensive drives for you, especially late in the game on Friday, and he scored his second goal of the season on Saturday. What's allowed Shane and fellow rookie Harrison Blaisdell, who's averaging a point per game this year as well, to hit the ground running in their first season of college hockey? Yeah, I just think just playing, you know, playing your game, you know, bringing the uh, the things that you have for assets to your game to the to the forefront here, and you know, they both. Are very good offensive players. They both they're both smart players. They play with energy, and you know they they played at a, at a they played in a dominating role in, in junior hockey where they came from. So you know it's one of those things where they, they kind of uh, kept going where they left off in the junior hockey ranks, and uh, and again they're going to be a big part of our team. Yeah, certainly. Well, Pinto, Blaisdell, and the rest of your squad are back home this weekend to face another familiar opponent from the WCHA in Bemidji State. You've played the Beavers every year for the last decade. Are you expecting a similar type of game plan from Tom Saratori this time around? Or has his group evolved a little bit from the recent, more defensive-minded BSU squads that we're used to seeing? Yeah, you know what, I think the one thing that they do bring that's uh, consistent from year to year is their, their hard work ethic. You know, they're, they t they're a team that competes extremely hard. You know, I'll play five players on the ice. Uh, one thing I think they've evolved from is they've got some uh, pretty good skilled players in their group now. Uh, you know, as far as some forwards that can get up and go and make plays, and even their defense too. So, you know, they're just not that, you know, hard, gritty team. They, they have that in their bag, but they also have some pretty good players that can make some plays too. Yeah, Bemidji always plays UND tough, but what would two wins this weekend mean, especially at the front ends of a big five-game homestand for your squad? Yeah, it would, it, would, it, would be, uh, it would make a big impact on our group right away here. I thought we built confidence with our group in, in Canisius, uh, winning two games at home, getting a, an early sweep, and then going on the road, getting a tie on Friday night and uh, you know getting one point out of it. Would have liked to get one or two on Saturday, but I thought our group still built off that weekend in Mankato. And now to come home to make sure that we play in the Ralph uh, and get back to where we need to go would be huge, a huge impact. And obviously the start of a five-game uh, homestand would be very impactful. Yeah, well, we're looking forward to seeing your team back in action again on Friday and Saturday at the Ralph. Best of luck against BSU, Brad. Thanks, Alex. We'll have more on UND's matchup with the Beavers a little later in the show, but when we come back, we're catching up with new UND assistant coach Carl Guerin. Stay tuned. When an assistant coaching position came open on Bradbury's staff this past spring, lots of names were floated out as potential candidates. The one that quickly became the people's choice, though, was former UND goaltender Carl Gehring. And in the end, the two-time All-American and former Syracuse Crunch assistant got the nod. I had a chance to catch up with Carl shortly after he was hired early this summer. Here's that conversation with UND's newest coach. Carl Gehring, welcome back to the University of North Dakota. As a player here, as a coach here, this place is obviously a special place for you. Talk me through what it means to get to come back now as an assistant on Bradbury's staff. You know, for me, getting the opportunity to come here as a player was a special thing and to be a part of the program back then. I was so fortunate to get that opportunity and, and to be, uh, be part of those teams and certainly was a springboard for me to go on and play professional hockey and, and springboard into coaching too. So, um, you know, going away at, at different stretches in my career has, has given me good perspective, but um, you know, this will always be a special place to me from having played here, having gotten so many opportunities here, and um, just thrilled to be back. When you found out that this position was going to be open, how quickly did those ideas kind of start to spark of like, hey, I, I really need to get my name in the ring? Kind of talk me through that process. You know, Brad, Brad's always been a mentor of mine. Um, you know, he was, was a coach here when I was playing, and. Um, you know, really got to know him well, but I've always just enjoyed talking to him about my career as a player and then even getting into coaching. So, um, you know, when the opportunity came up, it was something I certainly wanted to visit with him about and um, certainly uh, was just excited for the opportunity to come back and, and contribute to the program again. Brad Schlossen had a great article about your hiring process and the, the legendary four-hour meeting that you had with, with Brad and with Dane Jackson. Um, kind of talk me through that process of explaining a little bit what 
made you the best candidate for this job and what kind of took place when you had a chance to chat and present your case? That, that meeting really centered around uh, looking, at, looking at a full team game and looking at a five-on-five -five perspective and um, I was really fortunate to be with the Tampa organization the last couple of years and, and really learned a ton from the coaches there and um, you know to be able to come and talk about those ideas and um, how impactful I saw they were in, in creating a good team structure and play um, you know that that was kind of the bulk of the dialogue and it was just uh, it, it was really enjoyable just to sit down and talk about those things and, and kind of have a good uh, back and forth so to speak about um, the team game too and, and to be more a part of that. Because for you obviously as a goaltender is there kind of a stigma that you know well goaltenders just kind of know that part of the game that you've had to overcome? I think it's natural with with goaltenders and especially for myself I've, I've you know focused on kind of being that specialty and, and working with those guys um, so, so to me it's kind of natural. Um, that being said, I, I think you're always cognizant of the full game and obviously there's a lot more to it so uh, it's, it's nice to be able to work on that aspect and, and show that uh, level of, of growth and things that you're continuing to work on and learn. You obviously bring some unique skills and unique experiences to the table. Kind of talk us through what does make you the best candidate for this job because I think a lot of people would say this was a slam dunk hire to get you back on board. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, <laughs> uh, don't get modest on Yeah, you know, I, I think the big thing is, uh, you know, starting with the program itself, uh, you know, how much it means to me and how excited I am to be back here and, um, you know, just grateful for this opportunity and uh, obviously excited to, you know, get to work with the goaltenders here. That's obviously been, a, been an area of mine, but uh, really excited to work in a lot of different areas with the team. That's the fun part of coaching is, uh, getting to help build that group, getting to know the individuals within the group and uh, really doing everything you can to help them grow and, and help, help elevate that team to the best you can. KG has been tasked with coaching the defensemen and the goaltenders this year as well as running the power play and so far UND is allowing under two goals a contest, the second best defensive showing thus far in the NCHC. Gehring's defense could very well be tested this weekend with a suddenly potent Bemidji State squad coming to town. We'll preview UND's matchup with the Beavers when North Dakota Hockey Central returns. Now we're rolling. Two full weeks are in the books in the college hockey season, and with every passing weekend, we're learning a little more about who's good right now and who's still a work in progress. Those details are shown to some degree in this week's USCHO.com poll, where Denver is still on top after an impressive home sweep of Boston College to improve to 6-0-0 on the campaign. Wisconsin, meanwhile, is the big mover this week as Tony Granado's Badgers jumped 11 spots to number six after sweeping Minnesota Duluth in Madison. UMD is currently one and three on the year and has slid down to number eight after starting 2019 atop the rankings. North Dakota, meanwhile, has stayed put at 16, one of five teams from the National Collegiate Hockey Conference to be ranked again this week. Omaha, by the way, would be number 22 this week if the poll were extended. Six NCHC teams are in action this coming weekend, and as per usual, there are a handful of top non-conference matchups on deck, including a top 20 Huskies versus Huskies battle between number 14 St. Cloud State and number 11 Northeastern at the Brooks Center. Also of note, this weekend sees Duluth play Minnesota in Minneapolis and Western take on Michigan in Ann Arbor in a pair of outstanding in-state rivalry series. Lots of bragging rights on the line in those two matchups. For North Dakota, this weekend series against Bemidji State is a big one. Now, if you recall, the Beavers picked up their first ever series win over UND last October. And while the team from Grand Forks will be hoping to reverse those results from last year, they're more focused on the present than the past, especially after their last series in Mankato. Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, I think it's, uh, Friday night we, uh, gave, we uh, didn't play as well for a full 60. Uh, I thought tonight we played a pretty pretty good 60 minute game. Um, early in the season we're playing a tough, big, tough physical team out here and uh, I thought we showed we can play with anybody in the country. You know, it was a tough one. You know, I thought we played well the first two periods, even the third, but 
you know, they're a good team. I thought we played well enough to win, but sometimes it just doesn't go your way. So just got to bounce back versus uh, Bemidji here. So uh, we just got to look inside. Uh, it's a good, it's a good measuring point. They're a really good team. Kudos to them. But uh, I think we're a good team as well. We got to just figure out uh, how to in those tight games, figure out how to score a couple more goals, um, kind of generate a little bit more offense that way. Uh, we'll go back to practice on Monday and we'll, we'll be working hard again. Yeah, no, there's a lot to learn here, especially for myself. You know, it was, it was definitely a tougher matchup. You know, they're older guys and I just know I need to get better at my skating, be stronger on the puck. So it's definitely a good learning experience and I think the whole team's going to learn from it. So. Yeah, it's huge. Um, we're back home with, the, with our fans and it's going to be a good stand for us. Uh, we got to get back onto that winning side and uh, we're looking forward to it. North Dakota against Bemidji State. Game one at the REA will take place at 7.30 p.m. Friday with Saturday's game two to follow at 7 p.m. Friday's contest, by the way, the first of five straight at home for UND. And we should mention all can be seen right here on Midco SN. That's all we've got for this edition of North Dakota Hockey Central. On behalf of everybody here at Midco SN, I'm Alex Heinert. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you at the round.